Have you started yet? No, no, it's OK. I was just about to start. What's happened? My bike broke on the way here, so I had to walk the rest of the way. <gasps> That's terrible. Can someone fix it for you? I don't know. I only bought it last week. I think I'm going to take it back to the shop and ask if they'll exchange it for a new one. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Today, we'll learn how to talk about different products people buy. We'll also learn about what makes a product good or bad and about how people make decisions about what to buy. We'll sing a song about the things we buy. We'll meet a National Geographic explorer and I'll read a book called Do You Buy It? That sounds brilliant. Let's begin. <music> Let's learn words about things people buy and their characteristics. This is a product. A product is something that's made for people to buy and use. A toothbrush is a product, and so is a computer. Manufacturer. Products are made by manufacturers. The person or company that makes a product is called a manufacturer. Cost. Products cost money. Customer. A person who buys a product is called a customer. Customers buy products for lots of different reasons. One thing that people consider when buying a product is cost. Something else to think about is quality. Quality means how well something is made. Break. A product that isn't well made is likely to break. Another characteristic customers should consider when buying a product is safety. A safe product protects people from getting hurt. It's important for products like cars and children's car seats to be safe. Test. This person is testing a product. To test is to check a product to make sure it's safe to use. We've learnt a lot of words about products and their characteristics. Let's review the words we've just learnt. <music> These sweets are made in a factory. What are they? Unscramble this word. Products. They're products. True or false. Products don't cost money. False. Products do cost money. Products cost money to make and to buy. Now fill in the blank. Manufacturers. Products to make sure they're safe. 
manufacturers test products to make sure they're safe. Fill in the blank. Low quality products easily. Low quality products break easily. This is a factory. Who owns the factory? A manufacturer. The factory is owned by a manufacturer. Large manufacturers can produce thousands of products per minute. What is one of the most important characteristics to consider when buying a car? Is it colour, price or safety? You should consider safety. It's very important to have a safe car. This is another characteristic people consider when buying a product. Unscramble this word. Quality. Many customers consider quality when buying a product. This person is buying a product. What is this person called? Is she a manufacturer, an inventor or a customer? She's a customer. Now let's learn about how manufacturers test different products for quality and safety. This is a dummy. Dummies often take the place of humans when manufacturers test products like cars. Impact. This is an impact. Here's an example of an impact. This is a crash test. Crash tests help manufacturers identify weak spots in the materials or the design of a vehicle. Manufacturers test their products in other ways too. Tear. To tear something is to rip it using force. Drop. Manufacturers drop products to test for strength. Waterproof. Manufacturers test some products to make sure they're waterproof. Dip. They're dipping this toy in water. One way to test if a product is waterproof is to dip it in water. If water leaks into the product, the product isn't waterproof. Fix. This person is fixing a car. If a product breaks after we buy it, we must fix it to be able to use it again. Or we could ask someone else to fix it. Yes, that'd be better. We've learnt a lot about how manufacturers test products for quality. Now, let's review those ideas. <music> Fill in the blank. A low quality shirt might easily. A low quality shirt might tear easily. Look closely. Why is this product being tested? Is it being tested to make sure it's strong, safe or waterproof? The product is being dipped in water. 
It's being tested to make sure it's waterproof. Fill in the blank. To hit something with force is to cause an... <laughs> to hit something with force is to cause an impact. True or false? Car manufacturers use real humans to crash test cars. False. Car manufacturers use dummies to crash test cars. The dummies used in crash tests are designed to look and move like real humans. A computer inside the dummy tells the manufacturer how a car accident would affect a real person. Fill in the blank. One way to check that a product is waterproof is to it in water. One way to check that a product is waterproof is to dip it in water. What happened? He dropped an egg. Oops, that made a mess. What is he doing? Is he fixing, painting or cleaning the car? He's fixing the car. What's happening in this picture? Unscramble these words. Crash test. It's a crash test. Now let's talk about electronic products and the characteristics people consider when deciding what to buy. Keys. Computer keyboards are full of keys that represent different letters and symbols. Wear and tear. People who use their computers a lot need keyboards that can take a lot of wear and tear. Wear and tear is the stress or damage you cause to a product when you use it. Another thing to consider when deciding which computer to buy is whether it has Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a technology that allows you to access the internet without plugging your computer into a wall or using a cable. If you're buying a mobile phone, you should make sure it's got good reception. This is a text message. To send a text message, you type and send the message from your mobile phone. Lots of new mobile phones have got this feature too. This is an app. Apps are computer programs that you can download onto your mobile or tablet. You can get apps for lots of different things, like playing games or watching videos, or even for helping you to study. OK, now let's review the words. Look carefully at this photo. What is it? App. It's an app. Next one. True or false? You have to have good reception to make a call on a mobile phone. True. 
You have to have good reception to make a call on a mobile phone. She's typing something on her phone. Unscramble this phrase. Text message. It's a text message. Did you know that trillions of text messages are sent each year around the world? Fill in the blank. If your computer has got a strong <coughs> signal, you can access the internet easily. If your computer has got a strong Wi-Fi signal, you can access the internet easily. Look closely at the picture. What does it show? Wear and tear. This lorry can take a lot of wear and tear. You press these to make words on a computer. Is it the keys, the screen or the mouse? You press the keys on a keyboard to make words on a computer. Look, look, I've got a new mobile phone. The person who sold it to me showed me how to use it. He told me to press this button to send text messages. He told me to use this app to play games. He told me to be really careful with the phone. He told me not to drop it. He told me not to dip the phone in water. Oh! Hello? Oh, hi, Mum. Guess what the owner of the sweet shop asked me to do? What did she ask you to do? She asked me if I could try some new sweets. Oh, what did you say? Well, she asked me what the sweets tasted like and I said, delicious! She also asked me if I could write down which flavours I liked and which ones I didn't like. And she told me not to eat the sweets all in one go. <gasps> Yum! for safety that's good products should be safe they should be safe for you and me when you're a customer the products you buy shouldn't break a manufacturer should try not to make mistakes is this watch waterproof? It goes tick-tock. Let's dip the watch in water. It's just a test to make sure everything is safe. Lots of the things we buy are tested for safety. That's good. Products should be safe. They should be safe for you and me. Quality is important. Products should be safe. A factory that makes things should test everything just in case. A dummy sits in a car. The car speeds up. Crash! Don't worry. It's just a test to make sure everything is safe. Tested for safety. That's good. Products should be safe. They should be safe 
It's time to watch some videos. Yes, it is. We're going to watch some videos about how manufacturers test different products for safety and quality. This is a shopping centre. Customers can buy all kinds of products at a shopping centre. For example, I buy clothes at the shopping centre. And I buy computer games at the shopping centre. This is a factory. Most manufacturers make their products in factories. Wow! Look at all those products. There must be hundreds of them. That's amazing. Manufacturers also test their products before selling them to customers. Car manufacturers test drive cars around a track to make sure they work properly. Car manufacturers also test for safety. This is a crash test. The dummies in the car take the place of real humans. They've got computers and sensors all over their bodies to show manufacturers what would happen to a real human on impact. There are so many ways manufacturers test their products to make sure they're safe and that they'll last for a long time. Products must be able to take a lot of wear and tear. It looks like they're having a lot of fun. Fix. They're fixing the product. If a product doesn't pass a test, the manufacturer must fix any problems before selling the product to a customer. That's right. I wouldn't want to buy a product that broke easily or that wasn't safe. <laughs> Neither would I. Now let's meet Ian Cousin, National Geographic Emerging Explorer and Behavioural Ecologist. My name's Ian Cousin. I study collective animal behaviour. Animal behaviour is all around us. Organisms that we may think are, are relatively simple, organisms like schooling fish or perhaps flocks of birds, in actual fact can harness the collective capacity to solve problems. And so it's great when, when one is doing science to discover things that no one has, has thought about before because they, they assume the world works in a certain way and you can actually find out it works in, in quite a different fashion. Today's book is called Do You Buy It? Advertisements are all around us. They're on television, on hoardings, in magazines and online. According to studies, Children are exposed to thousands of adverts every day. Each year, billions of pounds are spent on advertising around the world. Companies spend this money to try to persuade consumers to buy the things that they are selling. While advertising has always targeted adult consumers, in some countries, advertisements are increasingly targeting children. Why? Because children not only spend their own money, but they also often have an impact on how their parents spend money, too. Advertisers have got many clever techniques to get children to want to buy their products. Have you ever decided that you wanted a product after seeing an advertisement for it in a magazine or in a television advert? If so, the techniques used in the advertisement may have worked on you. Advertising techniques are designed to make you believe certain things about a product. Some of these things may be true, but others may not be. By understanding advertising techniques, you can work out what is and isn't true in an advert. This can help you make better choices about what to buy. Testimonials. Sometimes an advert focuses on a special person who viewers are likely to trust and listen to. This kind of advertisement is called a testimonial. In testimonial advertising targeted at adults, the people in the adverts are often experts. For example, an advert for cold or flu medicine might show a doctor saying good things about the medicine. Often this person is not really a doctor, but is an actor dressed as a doctor. And even if the person is a real doctor, the doctor is getting paid for being in the advert. Don't you think someone would be more likely to say good things about a product if he or she was getting paid to say them? 
When testimonial advertising targets children, the person in the advert is often a famous actor, singer, or sports person. For example, an advert for a soft drink might show a famous singer advertising the drink. But does this really mean the singer actually drinks the soft drink in real life? Does it say anything about the quality of the drink? Companies pay famous people a lot of money, sometimes millions of pounds, to advertise their products. Why? Advertisers know that children are more likely to buy something advertised by a famous person they like. Are you? Bandwagon. The bandwagon technique tries to make a viewer believe that buying a product can help the viewer fit in or feel that they belong. The message in these adverts is, everybody else is buying our product. If you don't want to be left out, you should too. Because it is often important for children and teenagers to feel that they fit in, this can be a very successful technique for selling to young people. But do you really think that buying a product can make a person fit in or belong? Appeal to individuality. Appeal to individuality is the opposite of the bandwagon technique. Of course, people want to fit in, but they also want to feel different from everyone else, to feel unique, special or cool. Adverts that appeal to individuality tell you that customers who buy this product are special because they are individuals who can think for themselves. But are you really thinking for yourself if you buy a product because an advertiser told you to buy it? Glittering generalities. Advertisements sometimes talk about a product with words that sound exciting or impressive, but which are so vague that they haven't got any real meaning. The words may sound great, but they do not give details, show evidence, or make any specific guarantees. This technique is called glittering generalities. Glittering generalities frequently include unfinished or unclear ideas. This makes it impossible to evaluate whether the claim is true. For example, a shampoo ad may promise you softer and shinier hair. But what does this mean? Softer and shinier than what? These ads also frequently use statistics and numbers in a way that sounds scientific, but is actually meaningless. People are often impressed when they hear statistics, even when the numbers don't mean anything. Many consumers hear the exciting or impressive words in a glittering generalities advert without noticing that there is no evidence given to support the words. Don't let yourself be tricked so easily. Make sure you watch out for glittering generalities in advertisements. Emotional appeal. Advertisers often use words that make the viewer feel certain emotions, like happiness or excitement. By creating these feelings with words and images, the advertiser hopes that the viewer will feel these emotions about the product being sold. This technique is called emotional appeal. Now that you know some of the most common types of advertising techniques, look for them when you see adverts and ask yourself some questions like these. Just because a famous person advertises the product, does that make it a quality product? Can this product really help me to be more popular? Is it really going to make me seem unique? Does the advert say things that sound really good, but actually don't mean anything? Does the advert make me feel emotions that haven't really got anything to do with the product? Be an informed viewer and a clever consumer. When an advertiser tries to sell you something that doesn't make sense, just don't buy it. We had fun today, didn't we? Yes, we did. Today, we learnt about the products people buy and their characteristics. We also learnt about how manufacturers test their products and how people decide which products to buy. All this talk about products is making me feel like going shopping. Me too. I can exchange my bike. <laughs> see you next time. See you next time. And we'll see you next time too. Bye. Bye.